In week two, uh, similarly, you will do the lab exercise that you'll meet on Wednesday and uh, we will tackle uh, a bit of um, this more complex layout and uh, storing states. Like, so you can do filter search. And then it's related to an even more complicated assignment, which is the Yelp-like app. And uh, I, as usual, we incur encourage you to start really early. Start by taking a project, you need a project, and put the README file there, work through the items, ask if you're stuck. I'm not sure if I can get much of the app today uh, because Partly, I want to cover some uh, some core concepts. Partly, I'm not as well prepared with the all these API changes. But you know, it, we we have to do some API changes. So, sorry, I won't be able to guide too much into the homework. But I hope that our session will be interactive, and we all can still learn a lot about yeah. it. Let's start uh, right away. Go into the uh, a new React. I can find my terminal. Can I start with the new React uh, app? No. Has, if you, did anyone use create React Native app? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so you use that create React Native app, and then you put in app name. Uh, this is the JavaScript way. And it will create an app, and there's no Android folder, no iOS folder. And you can just write in JavaScript. Uh, the problem is you cannot go into the iOS and Android folder to change the app delegate or to change the, the Gradle uh, setting. But for a lot of apps, it's good enough because we're just calling the native component via React. Okay. So uh, that is welcome, that's, that's totally fine. The, when you use Facebook login, then you have to use a different way to integrate it. Um, if, for the consistency in our app, I'm just gonna use the React Native normal way, React Native, um, with that in it, and then app name. So I'll just go through simple nav and simple nav to cover navigation first. So for example, I have an app name here already, so I'll just name it like, uh, lecture two. If you use create React Native app, it's called C R N A. You can change back to this mode right? by ejecting the app, uh, and it will create the iOS and Android folder. Something we can learn from that is that the way they structure the files, there's some convention in the way they set up the project. And I'm going to apply some of that convention here. Okay, almost there. Um, and then from, from this project, we go into lecture two, we start the, a code new um, user studio code. And uh, does anyone not use Visual Studio Code? You use a new client? Okay, so I see some new client nodding your head. Excellent. So let's start building an app together and then we'll talk about data binding and, and we switch to Redux. Because it's still new, let's also pay attention to some coding style and naming convention. If you have some good ideas, please uh, go ahead and share. My God, this thing is so so <laughs> so small. Was it always like this? Yeah. I think I, I should have uh, picked a better resolution. Ah, probably okay. All right. So. First thing we talk about, uh, just focusing on just I uh, Android or iOS for now. If you don't, don't try to do both, right? And uh, unfortunately, some of you have Android easier to set up. Uh, we haven't really fully decided what's the best 
just focus on Android or not, but we do know that iOS has better support. And so I'm going to focus on iOS for now. It's easier for me to uh, demo. What do we do with the index.ios.js file? Normally, we try to keep it as similar as Android file, right? So hold, you say. So uh, one recommended practice is that let's just return everything down here as, let's just run this app first. Why is it not, why is it not running? Okay, it's, it's still working on it. So after it's done, I'm going to change this to um, just one app component. I encourage you to think very, uh, pay attention very clearly on the syntax, right? So in here, we have a render function. Sometimes you may extract this function out as render component or something else. So uh, it just return JSX, right? It's, it's like a string. So I have this component here, app. If I run it, it will crash. So I need to import it. I want to wait. I'm a bit ambitious here. I'm, I just, I'm uploading my class lecture at the same time. Maybe uh, it's processing, so I think uh, I'll leave it there. Okay, sorry. We does anyone know how to reset and uh, fix this problem? If you run multiple multiple uh, React Native version app, the packager will just have some conflict. I think so. It succeeds here for some reason. It failed. Uh, I don't have the packager running. So maybe I can just say restart packager, or is that a, I forgot the, the syntax. The, what's that? Yeah, another way is probably just to display the port. It will run it on this, and I have a bunch. I'll just kill those guys, 199.3. And uh, if I run it again, it does. React Native. As mentioned, when you run iOS, it tries to find the project file in the iOS folder. If you have CocoaPods, it will find the workspace file. But for the for most of our purpose, we just use Xcode project instead of workspace, instead of CocoaPods. When you need extra SDK, you just drag the framework out in. Unfortunately, with Android, we have to do it. We have to provide different instruction. All right, we all have it here. Let's just start coding a little bit faster. I save and I turn on Command D uh, here. For some people, if it doesn't work, it's Command Control Z. There's some weird situation like that. I have it on, under live reload. And let's fix the first issue, which is I need to import app from. Ah, here's the convention we want to use, right? We want both Android and iOS to use the same app as much as possible. So I create a folder called app. And then in there, I put the components in. In your simple app, let's put all the components in one folder. So later on, you may have them as components and all these things. But let's say I have this app, and I save it. I create. Uh, it will complain. I need an app folder. One more convention, which is naming your component files, lowercase or uppercase. 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 Yes. So it's interesting, but you know. The way we name reducers like camel case, this is like uh, upper case, it's crazy. So uh, we don't need any of the extra stuff, we just need to register the app. So I just need to keep app registry, I don't need anything else. I'm using prettier, I don't know if there, so you notice that it will choose another convention which is JavaScript. If I have um, single code, I save it, just becomes double quote, it's just one way to use things, but it's, it's your preference, you can change it. So, one more thing here, and I still can't resolve this module, I probably need a dot slash in here, uppercase, we'll talk about that more later, and then 
if you're using Visual Studio Code, I assume you already have all of this in there. In import React component. Import what? Um, React Native, right? And then in here, we, we probably just need text for now. And you have uh, the standard way, which is class extend a component. So I'll call this app. That's it. And we'll just start with a, there's a little bug here, it's like two cursor. Uh, so we just start here with, hello. Huh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, if you search for React Native, definitely don't trust all the extension out there, but I think the only two things you need is this, the tool and the uh, uh, snippets. So in the readme file here, the snippets, you'll see that, uh, let me just, you see that this snippet has some of the components here. And if you use it, it, it gives you good convention. There is the way to do stateless components, right? Sometimes you, as you become uh, more efficient, you want to write very small component, no state in it, then there's some uh, better ways here. But the, the thing I use the most is just, you know, CCS here, component class, and then import React, import React component, okay? So then in here, I probably have what I need, run it, and hello. Here's one more thing to know, uh, is that you see it overlaps the, the status bar, and uh, for some people, they may have to go in here and import platform, and then you have to basically, for iOS, you need to add a little bit, add a little bit of uh, navigation, uh, the, the height for the status bar, so you don't have something overlap here. A lot of time we actually don't care because we use Flexbox. So I uh, re recap Flexbox a little bit. And in here I have, um, I need to import view. Re uh, Visual Studio Code is not as smart as new client where it will detect the components before that, but for the rest, usually it's okay. You just, once you have it, then you know, you'll understand that it comes from the view. And here, someone, can someone tell me how to put hello in the middle of the screen? Right, you definitely, before that, you want to see how much this guy is occupying first, right? Um, live reload sometimes fail with errors, we all know that, right? It, first, you have to detect that, hey, it's not covering the entire space. So how do you do that? Right, flex one. If you use Flexbox in CSS, it's different, right? It, in in uh, React Native, just know that flex just come with a number, and when we have two components together, it just compared a number one and two, it means this guy's one and this guy's two. All right, so any number here works. So flex one, and then I have red all over the place here. So how do you put red right in the middle? What is the, right now, what is the direction of flex? Column, right? So if I have a column, and then this guy, uh, background color, let's say yellow. If I want it in the center, you just say, uh-oh. If I want it in the center, it's column, so you want a line what? No, you want justify? Content, right? So this is called the primary axis. The main axis is uh, justify content. So uh, if we do that, it goes through the, along the primary axis. How do you want this red to be in the center? A line? So do you guys see a line content and the line items? What is align content? Okay, it will be really strange. So don't confuse align items with uh, no align content with justify content. Align contents like if you have a lot of content and inside, you know, multiple lines, then align content actually makes sense. A lot of times we don't use it. But we run into problems when you know people think justify content is the same as align content. Great. So let's actually do something more useful here. Uh, I'm gonna have an input and I'm gonna add navigation. So this is my um, hello, so I'm gonna maybe say name, and I have text input. Notice here, I don't have text input. It doesn't understand. VS Code is really powerful. You can have debugger going on uh, you know, in here, but we really need to set it up properly. So if you understand that, then we have, um, this is a column layout, that's not good, so I want, Inside here, uh, flex, do I want one? 
probably it's okay to have one. Maybe I don't need it. Flex duration row. And this is my name, and I'll just put a button. Uh, but input text field. Uh, that's input. Then now you see that it understands it from text input, so we can actually have uh, all this uh, autocomplete. So probably it's on change text. Another convention we want to use is that we really need to understand double arrow function, right? And uh, what, what is the first argument here? For most event, it will be just some value, right? So in this case, what? Is this a new, new value, new text? And then what is this function here? Handle the text, we'll set it to a state. So let's say if I set it to state, this is an arrow function. If I use this here, what is the this keyword? Is in this component? Because they, uh, this is double arrow, so it's not this JavaScript function. So let's say set state, and then let's just set you know user as, uh, if I call this a user, um, username maybe, and then call, what is the value? New text, right? And if I close this, what else is wrong in here? I need to close the view. Huh? Line 17. It's not too bad. It's say line 22, but. Line 17. Oh. Right, let's not close it. I really like prettier, but it's also really weird. Every time you save it, depending on the width, it just refactors your code. Not sure what happens there. All right, so we have, uh, let's get rid of the color. And we have name and email. Uh, maybe we need, what's the value? Is it called text? What is the, that's good, right? Oh, one problem with text input is that you need to style it, because if not, it doesn't know how big it is right so you need you want the height maybe i'll just put a width as well all right what's going on there it's this red color we don't need it anymore because we know it's covering everything there i don't even have i have name up here i don't have uh Text input. I want a button as well. So we fix that along the way. I don't know how to escape out of the, the alerts easily. If anyone knows, let me know. All right. So we have view. Why is it complaining up here? Oh well. We have this name and this text input, and I, I can't get this text input to show anything. Come again? All right, we'll set border with one. Unfortunately. Thank you very much. You just saved my life there. And we don't need to align items to the center. All right? And we just add a. Now, here's another thing about um, we add a button to it. Unfortunately, I don't know a better way. Uh, it doesn't automatically insert for me. Someone open a issue on GitHub and they really don't have it. So I have this button. What's the button? Is it name or what? What's the button value? Label. Label? Are you sure? So no problem. It actually will tell that you know we need a title, right? So error different development, the code school style. Uh, so this will be like, you know, go to next screen, for example, go next, all right. So we have a title, and of course, if you text click here, you run into an error as well, it need this. So the cool thing about React Native, it actually set certain property as required. And uh, we, unfortunately, we're not covering some of the uh, prop type stuff, but here, so on press, at this point, we really don't want to write code like this. And one more convention, uh, which is inlining the function. One more convention to use is instead of an error function in here, we just pass in the function name, right? And this is only possible in later React version where it uses ES7. So this is, uh, I will just call this dot 
underscore it's like a private method in here right so you can call it maybe handle press or I can call it underscore press on press and because it's under this so it'd be in this keyword is app component so we define it as underscore on press now for things like this we want to use double arrow function right we don't want to use this one because then the word actually this actually may, may still work no they, it will, will not bind the, the the component here into that so I want then the word this will be actually the component class right now you want this this to be inside this this view itself so let's carry on the word this so keep it like this and when you press there's no any argument is it an event well, we don't need to know, right? So maybe you can control lock and, and see it. Uh, so let's just press. All right, we're going to go to the next screen. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to refactor this and again, convention. Double arrow, for those of you not used to JavaScript, you see, why do I not have um, parentheses around here? Why do you not have this? Prettier actually go back to the convention. Uh, so when you only have one argument, it's okay. When you save, you just get rid of the parentheses. When you have two arguments, right? Then you, you need to have a you know the parentheses. But unlike JavaScript function, where you can just have as many arguments as you like, and you can take the this is very different. If you want multiple arguments and you want an argument array, then you have to put use the spread operator this way, and then you can get arcs zero, one, two, three. So that's a double arrow function, super important for our uh, component uh, writing. But now I'll just separate this real quick. I have this, this will be underscore handle, uh, I don't know, text change, right? And that, if I save, it should automatically read that for me. But in here, I will just call it this dot underscore handle text change. Great. Let's go to the next screen and then say hi to my name. I let's say we're building, a, um, you know, this. I don't maybe a chat app, and then you tap in a message and you go to the next one. We in this app component is getting too much, and we need to sort of build this. Uh, I'm going to call this a home screen. Let's refactor this, right? And we, we will need to use navigation. So what do we, uh, what do, we do with, with the, how do we include React navigation? React, what? All right, let me just add everything first. Uh, all right, for setup. All right, let's just add this. Yarn at React Navigation. Forgive me if I get the name wrong. Is it? Is it right? All right from React Navigation, there will be some convention itself, uh, and so we'll just go there. Import from React Navigation. What what navigator have you used? Stack. Navigator and well then we need to start refactoring this code and uh, I'm just gonna quickly pull the uh, stack navigator website stack navigation here so today I uh, will talk about just using navigation to pass properties uh, you know variables or states sorry there are different things around between components and then see oh this is inconvenient and then we'll go to redux but the really tricky thing is using redux with navigation this one is harder than the old navigator so okay you know in let's use stack navigator and the traditional uh, normal convention way is you will use stack navigator with a list of properties to understand this basically i have my you know app navigator I now this is the component I'm going to use the parent navigator is stack 
navigator, right? And you pass in here. So maybe you call this navigation routes or config. But some people, you know, pass it in directly like this. So sometimes you see people put this in a separate file. It's like, it's crazy, too many ways to do things. So I'll just call this you know, nav uh, config, right? And then we'll just use nav config. Do we all know the word const? Use const and let, never use var, right? Or we use code here, okay. So this is a simple JavaScript object. And the beautiful thing about Navigator is um, now I can just use the component named right here uh, in the old Navigator way. You have to do it a bit hackishly. So I call this home screen. Maybe you can call it home. Uh, and then there's a title, right? So title home screen. How do I go there? Basically, I'm going to move this entire thing to the uh, new file, new component. Like Charles say, uh, we're going to name everything as capital letter. Fun fact, do you know that Facebook has 30,000 components in their app, React Native app, and uh, well, just React app. And they name everything, it has to be like this, and all the files must be unique. So it's actually a nice convention for React Native. If you name your file really unique, it's easy to find. If you have index component in different places, you're going to have a nightmare. So uh, very quickly, I just paste that in here and import what is necessary. React component, that's it, right? And maybe import React Native. Uh, here will be view, text, text input. Of course, I could just move it from over there. And back into this app. If I save this, I'm going to be in trouble, right? Is then how do we uh, this app? So we're going to export this navigator. You see, it's important to understand what it returns, right? Like this thing returns a component, so I should be able to hook it up. And then I still need to put it inside. Or do I need to do that? I believe I should just. This guy is using. I mean, yes, thank you. Huh? At Stack Navigator. Here. Oh, Navigator. At Navigator. This is good. I was hoping that I could just do this. Huh? Import screen, yeah, but why is the error so weird? Import home screen from, ah, now this is another problem, right? You're not in app anymore. But unfortunately, yeah, I'm just gonna. Screen? No way, I thought there's a better way. Whoops, my bad. Screen, this title. I still don't think that's it. My God. So this will be screen, home screen. No, wait, 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 I got it, I got it. Okay, in here, screen. So we, we're gonna call it the same component name, right? Okay, that's it. I'm going to cheat and just use this like maybe app naming is really one of the difficult part. But just maybe an app navigator in here will be. Um, I guess I'm, I still can call it app custom component here app and then in here I just call that navigator app navigator almost there. Do we need navigation option? Let's see. No? Oh, my, let's just, sorry, huh? just, we're going to take a quick look at this guy. 
Stack Navigator is model stack. I don't I don't like the the way this is set up. This is just going to that stack. Where is uh where's the thing from outside? Okay, it should be just this simple, right? Route config. I don't understand why they, they use capital letter for this. But guys, I'm doing the same thing, right? Correct or not? I'm doing the same thing here. Let's look at this code and, and help me out. I have this app, extend component, and I render app navigator. Now, now the uh, simulator is not loading up. Sorry, it's a. This one. Stack navigator put in parentheses. In what line? Oh my god! Thank you! You gotta be writing code, the yeah, I code every day to, to know this. And my simulator is not working. My bad. Okay. Well, we're taking advantage of time and see if this makes sense. We have this app that just return app navigator, so technically I don't need this app thing. I should be able to just export na app navigator. My mistake just now is not use, not import stack nav navigator. Uh, the thing is, if you import it outside like this, it's worth explaining. You just assigning this name to the default module from the other, the module name from the other file. And sometimes, in in general, you don't want that because that file may have more than one module, right? So using the explicit way is, is better. So I hope even if I mess up. It now no devices included. <laughs> no, where's my simulator? No advice, no device. All right. So command. Oh, it's here. All right, it's a little bit better now. Okay, what we're we trying to do? We're trying to. Uh, Okay, that's too small. Can't even find my mouse. My God. When I said the the navigate um iPhone image to be too small, then it jumped out of the screen. It's better, right? So what's going on? What's the problem? And then we need the navigator options. Thank you very much. Export. Now, obviously, you don't need default if. Uh, oh, you want default because you don't want to use a parenthesis. So, export default home screen. And you want this app thing to be home screen. Right. Right. Yay. Well, now we need to navigate. Right. Uh, how do we navigate to the next screen? The special thing about each screen is that, that there is something called navigation in the props. So does anyone know how to go this, this alert, uh, replace alert with going to the home screen, uh, the next screen, screen two? This dot props dot navigations. And uh, this, we use it so much that we want to use this navigate, right? function out, so we're going to extract it, uh, navigate from this dot props, is that good enough? And then I will just say navigate dot get, no I need to go there, 
my god, this is something I just forget. I still remember the old navigation better. Uh, how do you go there? Dot get? Navigate. Alright. So, technically, so I should be able to just say navigate to screen 2. Okay. I'll go. There's only one navigation, and then we'll go to screen 2. Interesting behavior, it doesn't crash or anything. Screen 2, and here we go, um, very similar to screen 1. Uh, we just, I'll just type this again. I wish there's a, if you know a fast, faster way, let me know. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to use text. But this text now will lie under the navigation bar, so it, it won't be too bad. It will look a little, it will look prettier. Screen 2. Uh, this will be text screen 2. If I go here, I still need to import. Do I need to import? In. I need to define screen 2 in this. Screen, screen 2. And import that. If you notice along the way, I use any wrong, uh, bad convention that the whole class know. <laughs> Why does it go from. <laughs> this is the problem when. The export default, it just renamed the module for you and, and you, <laughs> you may not even realize, right? So in screen 2, I forgot component, right? So import React component. Yay! Let's do something a little better. We know that from... How do you pass variable from screen 1 to screen 2? Well, first, we just, just make screen 2 a little bit more interesting. You need the navigation option. And again, new, new standard in JavaScript, this is ES like 2000, ES7, so you can have static. So navigation options. I, what does it do? It's an, so in, in most, um, in Swift or any, any languages, uh, well, static will just mean it, there's only one instance, right? This is for this class. Uh, just also, it's supposed to be constant, uh, but the constant pointer. So obviously, we can change the content of it. So let's call it screen two. And actually, I hope that it will work. All right. Well, I want this screen to include um, the username. Remember, and let's debug a little bit. And one way to debug is maybe I have a view down here as well. And uh, I just, instead of view, I just call it maybe text. I'm going to print the state json.stringify. You can open out, um, right? I'm, what's the error here? Oh. Right, so if I if I make changes, it will you see it at the bottom here? And uh, uh, this justify content center is not uh, great. Let's say five star maybe. Wait, how do I have it at the oh it's inside never mind. This component is flex one, so I'll just use it. So see if I do flex one again. Then this guy will take up the same space as the guy up, up there. So it should be here, right? Same height. All right, so if I update stuff, you see it update my state. Now one important thing to do is, this is, um, again, this is like a static, I think, like it's a class variable again. So normally, if you don't change things, you, don't, you can do it like that. But if you want to start setting things, I think, you will have to use the constructor. 
and then here you, the only time you do state equal, right? So now in here username I'll just put Charles, and then down here I will need text input initial value to be this dot state dot username. Right, so uh, one more thing we want this thing to be right out there, uh, not. Um, so I think this you can say justify content to be what? I don't know, cover the whole thing? Uh, space between? That's not good enough. I want this to be like occupying one each. Or I guess I'll just tell this uh, text input to occupy everything. So like here flex one. So you don't need this space between anymore. So. Uh, and whoops, testify content. What's wrong with that? Whoops, that's not good. Uh, do I need flex one for each element? No. You, we want, it's already, this guy's already, this is already the whole thing. I want this to be the whole row. It was like, uh, input, uh, like, 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 well, yeah, I want, I want this to expand to the whole thing, right? So if you do that, this is still only a ratio thing, right? And, but I want this to really expand. Uh, and I'm really surprised that it's not expanding. Oh, go next. So, well, one way you can cheat is, I guess, the set of width here. Um, so what Charles said is, but it's not. Um, like, uh, yeah, I was using space between just now. Justify content space between, and then they just move three guys out. I'm a bit surprised. Um, so I, think. Well, I want this to be really long. Ah, because, oh, I see, this is when, my bad, if you don't have this width, it will actually use up the whole thing. <laughs> well, uh, that's strange. No, I want to prove that I'm right. That's really bad. That's Okay, well, I'm just going to make it long enough, and then if you guys know a better way, uh, let us know. All right, so from here, to go next and then put this in the screen is pretty straightforward, but just note that this is the, when you do your, your homework, the, the decision, design decision come in. We all know we're passing in the params here, right? You navigate, and you're gonna, I'm going to pass, what is this here? Username is? This dot state dot is username, and who knows how to um, set it to the title screen down here. So we just gonna use this, yeah. This dot. Hey, no, but it's not props, right? Oh, is it props? Okay, and then state, props and state. So I already have, okay, great. So props.navigation, I could actually extract it out, okay. Dot, state, man, some of you really know this stuff, awesome. So it's all under param, right? And I have to change the surrounding thing to the ES6 style, uh, the templating syntax. And then finally in JavaScript, we can do interpolation in string. So this is not an object. 
Navigation. Wait, what? Hey, sorry. Line. Wait, it's, it's here. I haven't changed anything. And if basically props is nothing here. Why? Correct. Now you have to set this into a different. It's no longer an object. It needs to be a function. So navigation and well, technically you can have more than one there in here. So actually, you may be able to, able to get the state directly. So would that be enough? Why is it complaining over there? I think I'm not returning. It's not ah. See, this is it will fail again because I'm not returning. It's another arrow function thing. You see these curly braces? How do you return that? One way is to really return this object, right? Another way is to just get rid of that all that together and put parentheses around them, convert that back back into this expression, and then. It still fails, but it's because of a different reason. All right, I'm gonna cheat. How do you navigate? Navigate. So it should be. Uh, this is. Okay, I'm not gonna minimize this thing again. It's gonna run away. Does anyone know how to how to get that out? I'm gonna check the other code real quick. Prepare this one second. I right, look at the um, like look at this one. I have navigation options to be now it's a function taking navigation and return it return this title uh, and it's saying navigation dot state dot params. Yeah, it's not state anymore, right? Username that username is not so params empty. Oh, sorry, Charles. Uh, that state what? I just did that, right? That. Oh, thank you very much. Do you guys see that? This is ridiculous. So there are two navigation there and oh, oh what? So I need this, huh? So then it extract out that. Well, it works. So we, we, we I hope that even though this is super slow, but we all learned that the, the you know some of the foundation of writing short, but it's it's really crazy to, to run into uh, some of these errors. Okay. So we pass the variables in here, and you imagine that you pass um, the you know from from screen A to screen B, screen C, screen C may go back to screen B, and if you just pass it around, it's all stay in uh, the state of the navigator, right? So we all did homework one with this. So uh, did anyone do it differently? Like, did you use anyone use Redux? Thank you. All right. Oh wait, I saw your hand. You tried Redux. Did you try Redux with with uh, React navigation together? You use an, the old navigator. Okay. So unfortunately, when you put the the thing together, I may have to ask Charles for help. All right. Let's do the Redux one. Uh, actually, it's eight. So. Let's take a quick break, get some water in the kitchen. We'll come back and talk about Redux.